Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I would like to share with you a few things that are very important for you to do at Endgame. I'm going to name you five of them, five that everyone else is doing, five that are super important for you to keep in mind and maybe somehow try to include them in your daily schedule in Arcage Unchained. Um, I'm also a brand new player to the game. I uh, have got to level 55 and I've went through all the hustle of finding these things out for myself. Some of them, unfortunately, a little bit too late because some of them I should start doing from when I'm 50. So I wanted to address this video to those of you who are new players to the game, same as myself, um, so you can get a better overview of what should you do after you hit 50 uh, plus in Arcage at Endgame. The first thing I want to mention is uh, Endgame gear. This is a question that I personally had. What's the Endgame in Arcage Unchained? What's the gear for it? And that is the Hiram gear. You get Hiram gear by farming mobs here in this continent Aurora. Any mob here in, this, in any of these zones, I believe, can drop you, has a chance to drop you the starting version of your Hiram set. These mobs in the contested zones obviously have a higher chance to drop, these ones have a lower chance to drop, but you can come here when you're level 50 and start grinding these mobs whenever you have some free time every day. You need, um, they drop you green Hiram gear, after which you work on that piece and get it to various uh, tiers and various colors as you upgrade it. I'm not gonna get into how you upgrade that gear, but it's just important for you as a fresh player to know that Hiram gear is the gear for endgame and that you get Hiram gear from here. How do you get here? You either ask a guildy to open you a portal to uh, Diamond Shores or anywhere else you want, or you do the whole uh, rowboat thing if you wanna come here sooner than 50. But if you're 50, you just open up your teleport book, you go to the dungeon section, and right here, for example, you have this dungeon called Serpentis. This is in Aurora. You just make your own portal for it and the dungeon here in your teleport books comes automatically when you hit 50. It's preferred that you would farm several pieces of the same item, several pieces of gloves, several pieces of weapons, several pieces of chest piece, hats, etc. Because eventually during your upgrading process for Hiram gear, some pieces are going to fail to upgrade or some pieces are going to just have bad stats and you're going to be very unlucky for uh, to get uh, two or more bad stats on it and then you have to start from zero again from green because it's preferred rather than using all the math needed to you know keep changing so it's nice if you have several pieces um, of each uh, gear item the second thing I want to mention is related to my point number one, which is the Hiram gear. How do you upgrade your Hiram gear? This also has to come within your daily routine at end game. You need to get upgrading mats and you get them by doing the dailies in these three zones that are also located in Aurora. These three zones, you make a party for them, you get your friends together, you join a raid that does the, the Hiram dailies, this is how they're called. And with those Hiram daily quests, you after, after finishing the quest, you get a choice in between these potions, yeah, that look like a, like a bottle, um, and scrolls that look kind of like this, right? So these scrolls and these potions are offered as rewards. You have to choose one of them. I highly advise you to choose the scrolls from all of the Hiram daily quests because, simply because, there is a lot more ways in game to get these potions than there are to get these scrolls. So choosing the scrolls for all your Hiram dailies is going to be very golden for you because you need them, a lot of them, um, in order to do the upgrading process of your starting Hiram gear into better and better and better. And that's thing number two, do your dailies and get your scrolls and then the, po the potions you can get from really a lot of other places. I'm, I don't really want to make this video too long. I'm not going to get into all the places, but for example, arenas and PVP in general is uh, a place where you can get these nice potions. Uh, also doing the Crimson, Crim, Crimson Rift thing, which is like a level uh, uh, lower level thing, is also a good way to get these potions. So th there are ways to get potions, but no ways to get scrolls besides these uh, dailies here. So do these dailies here, this is my number two thing. The third thing that I want to mention is farming your ancestral power. This is also something that people do at Endgame in Arcage Unchained a lot. There's groups in LFG also, ancestral group, etc. Uh, they go to this island, everything seems to be in the north in terms of Endgame in Arcage. Uh, here next to Aurora there's this island, Aegis Island, and you just go here. It's kind of like the Tiamaranta's Eye from Aeon, if you've ever played Aeon, uh, I don't know, 3.5, 4.0. Uh, it's kind of the same thing, uh, a PvP zone for Endgame players to come here and just farm XP by killing mobs. 
period. So you farm this XP by killing mobs and this ancestral power goes uh, for you right here. I have none of it on this character. This ancestral power unlocks um, different kind, not different kind of skills, but upgrades for skills. If you grind a lot of mobs after your level 55, you don't get experience here in your bar, you just get experience here in the ancestral uh, side. When you get a full bar of ancestral experience, you upgrade it using honor points, and then you get the access to these better versions of some of your skills that you choose, right? There's all the professions here. So this is something that people do, farming ancestral power on this island, and also ancestral power can be farmed here. If you look on the uh, tooltip there, it says Aegis Island and underneath that it says level 4 to 6 and that is ancestral power mob level. 4 to 6 level mobs can be found here, you can easily kill them even just to level up starting with level 50 if you're 50 yourself, you can just go here if you're crazy. Um, this In this zone there's levels for ancestral power in between 7 and 9, here there's between 10 and 24, depends how much ancestral power you need to farm higher and higher grade mobs. And this is the thing number three that I want to mention to you so you can keep that in mind. At number four is a very straightforward thing. Do not let your labor points be maxed out. Do not let your labor points get over 5,000 because if you do that you're just basically wasting money. Always do something with labor points. If you're just bored and today you just have 10 minutes of playtime, go to your scarecrow that you've planted just craft some tax certificates for God's sake. It takes a lot of labor points away from you so they can regenerate until tomorrow when you have more time to play and also you get XP and also not to mention you get tax certificates. You can do a lot of things with labor points. I'm not gonna get into all the things you can do but they're very useful and you should never have 5,000 there and go to sleep. That's my point. When you go to sleep, make sure you have 3000 there because the next day when you come back to play, you're gonna have again five. So go mine some rock, go steal someone's forest, go pick up your mushrooms from your plot, plant trees, do this, do that. There's a lot of things. Even open coin purses for God's sake, right? Do that or upgrade your Hiram gear, which I was mentioning at point number two. This is also requires labor, but do something with them. Very important at end game for you to pay attention to your labor points. Don't let them overflow. At number five and the last thing I wanna mention to you as being important to keep in mind and do at end game is getting Gilda stars. Gilda stars is this currency right here. You get it from leveling up, from your story quests, from ra random quests during the world and you also get them very important from um, the daily quest that you can take from community centers that you can buy with gold. Every zone has community center and in that community center you can purchase quests from that for that zone that give you some Gilda stars. Obviously there is other niche ways of getting Gilda stars like achievements and stuff like that but just I'm not gonna get into the Gilda stars things in depth but just for you to know um, Gilda stars are a very important currency at end game. Gilda stars give you the opportunity to buy anything that you see on this island. Of course not everything, not these tents, but I'm just saying there's a lot of goodies on this island that you can buy with Gilda stars. And getting Gilda stars and maybe even some days working if you don't have much time every day to play, but at least some days, make a, sa make a Saturday and Sunday when it's your day that you also get Gilda stars on top of the other four things I just mentioned in this video. Um, they are very important. They, they, they allow you access to buy a lot of things and all of these things are from this island. This island, by the way, is the Mirage Island. There is a portal in every housing zone, in every town, in some camps to Mirage Island. So you just enter that portal and you're here in Mirage Island. Both factions are here. It's a peace zone, so no worries. If you want a boat, to, to go on water, if you want a fishing boat, if you want a, a boat that you can actually DPS the Kraken with, if you want just a, just a, uh, just a little boat that you can just travel on the sea, it costs you Gilda stars to get the design and of course afterwards um, a lot of mats for you to actually create that. If you want houses, Gilda stars is the is the way to go is the currency to use you cannot really get Gilda stars in any other way uh, as everything else in Arcade Engine because it's not paint to win you cannot get them in any other way besides in-game means if you want a attached fa uh, farmhouse a, a, a house plus a farm around you then 
the design is right here, it costs Gilda Stars. Farming Gilda Stars is a great way to handle endgame. It is a very important thing at endgame. And also, you can do a lot of profit. You can make a lot of profit with Gilda Stars because other people are interested in buying these designs because they're tradable. So it's a super nice thing, a thing that you should definitely pay attention to. I wouldn't even put it at number five just for you to think that it's like mm, the least important out at endgame. It's kind of all of them are important that I mentioned, but just saying um, depends maybe at what you want to do this day or what you like to do in general. Maybe you just don't want to go to that Aegis Island and farm your ancestor power. That's perfectly fine. Maybe you're a farmer and you just do farming plus Gilda stars. That's, that's super nice, super fine. These were the five things that I wanted to mention to you guys that are very important at end game. Five things that are very simple to understand. And I hope that now you have a much better understanding of what's at end game, what are other people doing, why are they doing what they're doing, and what's the chat in LFG about, and so on and so forth. Of course, there's a lot of other things that I didn't, didn't even have time to get into, like farming and um, doing world bosses and guild quests and uh, all sorts of PvP things. The uh, Halcyona battle, oh Jesus, I'm not going to talk about them because... Let's say they're not as important as these five that I mentioned. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I, I wish you guys, as always, lots of love. Remember, if you want to buy Arch Agent, uh, Arc Agent Chain for yourself or for a friend, there is a link, my referral link in the description below. It is very appreciated. If you click that, it takes you straight to the buy page. You buy it and that's about it. It helps me out a lot. Lots of love as always. Uh, stay safe and see you really soon.